Herdman and uh, local entrepreneur here in the Twin Cities. And uh, I'm just really going to start with a story. Uh, back in uh, 2008, I started uh, buying rental properties, and uh, my rest of my life has been in tech. But figured like that's a good time to potentially get into real estate. And so we started buying some real high-end properties here in the Twin Cities. <laughs> uh, okay, maybe not that quite uh, low end there, but well, maybe not that quite high end either. But um, of this, right? And they're multifamily properties, and. The utilities I get split up, so the tenants are paying the, the heat, right, the electricity, the gas. The utility that I have to continue to pay is water, and it was a big thorn in my side because I didn't have any visibility to it, and essentially, you know, each month I'm getting these water bills, right, city of Minneapolis. And most of the properties that I have are anywhere from like two to five units, okay, so small buildings. Um, this is a particular water bill from one of the buildings. They use 15 units of water in a standard month. So how many of you know what a unit of water is? Anybody? Any day, how many gallons are in a unit of water? It's a CCF. I don't know. Right, right. <coughs> so the amount of gallons, 750 gallons in a unit, right? Um, so this is a typical water bill, and uh, every now and then I will get a water bill like this for the same property, right? 83 units. So my water bill just went from $174 to $611. I have no visibility to how much water is getting used. And a lot of times it's the toilet, right? The toilet's leaking, but it's not leaking all over the floor. It's just the, the, the flapper isn't working or some the innards isn't working right. And the tenants, you know, it doesn't bother them that the toilet's leaking because they're not paying the water. Um, so this happened enough that I was, got really, really frustrated uh, went online looking for a solution, and there really weren't any out there. So one water unit, right, on your water bill is about 100 cubic feet, about 748 gallons. 15 water units, right, 1,500 cubic feet, about 11,000 gallons. So that one water bill, 83 water units, right, 8,500 cubic feet, about 62,000 gallons of water used in one month. So imagine on the lawn on, say, July 1st, 62,000 gallons, one, one gallon, right? We all know what that looks like, jug of milk, jug of water. In one month, that gets used. And people just don't understand how much water they use. So I would get a bill, like the one you saw, and this would be my first reaction. Uh, what? <laughs> and once I look down and see how much water I've actually used and how much it cost me, there I am. <laughs> so again, I went online looking for uh, metering and um, so I look at a specific type of a meter. It's an ultrasonic meter, right? These, these clamp around the pipe. Uh, you don't have to cut into the pipe. And um, these don't look quite easy to install, and they're not. Uh, they're also expensive, you know, generally the, the low thousands. Um, and they're also not um, smart, right? They're not sending the data anywhere. It's mostly localized. Um, and the setup process is usually done by a technician. So we embarked on trying to create our own meter. So we started with a meter that uh, we got from China, which is an illegal copy of an illegal copy of an illegal copy of someone's patent. Um, got this on eBay, and we got our price down per meter to about, mm, I'd say, 200, 250 bucks a meter. Um, and what we did, the meter components really, is the meter itself, which is a pain in the butt to use, Transducers, okay, that's what reads the water flow. The cable to connect the transducers to the meter, then the clamps, right? The clamps are what go around the meter, <coughs> or the transducers around the pipe. Uh, so, what we did is uh, the first prototype that we built was off the shelf Home Depot parts. So, we have our electrical box, right? We have the meter. Uh, we have a, a dongle up top, which uh, was using a cellular signal. And on the inside, we had uh, a, a PC Duino, an RS-485. Um, and we started reading uh, the water flow of the pipe. And we got it to work. We got it to send up to the internet. We got it to go into a database. And we got it to visualize in a dashboard. <coughs> So we made a demo unit that we could start taking around to, to different 
multifamily property owners and start showing them you know, the technology. And here's a show of the dashboard, and this is what it looks like. When I press play, there will not be any cute dogs or treats. <laughs> or a video, for that matter. All right, let's see if I can do it again here. <coughs> so, you can see that this is looking at about, I opened this up about a minute before it started. Um, that's the amount of gallons I've gone through, how much we'll spend on water based on the city of Minneapolis, gallons per minute. And there's about a five second delay between what's running through the pipe and what's visualized on the screen. So now I can understand real uh, water flow in real time. And uh, there's a couple other functions. There's the historical uh, and also alerts. Right? So this is a, kind of an antiquated view of the dashboard. But um, the alerts you can set up so you can say, well, if water reaches X amount over X period of time, notify me via text or via email. So one of the installations we did, um, you can see that um, a, a toilet started leaking in a 26 unit building and over 17 days um, the gallons used was about 85,000 gallons of water. Cost of water was 167 bucks. Was that one toilet, did you say? Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's from the whole building, but the toilet is what contributed to it going so high. Yeah. Um, so 17 days typically, you know, after that was back to the 26,000 gallons. So there's about 60,000 <coughs> You know, gallons of, of waste um, that you know can get identified really within a couple of days um, by having someone pay attention to, to that and the alerts that are coming in, and then you know, going to the unit, uh, going to the building, and identifying which unit is leaking. So that brought us to um, our our second water meter is that on these bigger buildings, you don't know what's leaking, and 80 to 90 percent of the time, leaks are caused by toilets. So we created a toilet meter, again with off-the-shelf parts, that connects up to the toilet tank and also connects up to the supply line. Um, and this we just had, you know, batteries, Home Depot parts, um, you know, a little meter with a little paddle inside, um, and a spark cord. And uh, we got it to work, and we got it to, you know, see how much uh, water was flowing uh, whenever a flush was done, and we got it to go send to a to an app, and I can show you a screen in a second. This is uh, what the new version is going to look like. So essentially, the way this, the toilet meter works, you know, it connects, you can monitor toilets, and then you can get leak events if the toilet's leaking too long. So the benefit of, of a specific toilet meter is that if you have 200 units in a building, you can identify a leak within a matter of hours, and then you know exactly where the leak is happening in the building, which saves in tons of time just in you know maintenance and trying to find where the leak occurs. Um, so those are the two meters that, that we built, and um, that's kind of um, where we've been, and now I'm gonna talk about where we're going. Uh, so we uh, pitched both meters to Google Ventures about six months ago, and the guys from Google Ventures were both from San Francisco, and of course, water is a huge issue in California, and they're like the ultrasonic, you need to figure out you know, how you can do a consumer play with that because they said they would like to buy one if we were thinking more multifamily. Um, and then we also participated in the, the Clean Tech Open um, with um, really focused mostly on the toilet meter of uh, the Clean Tech Open. So um, had a great experience with that. Um, not as good of an experience as Deep Ender, but a good, a good experience. <laughs> Um, so really where we're at with these two products, um, there's two paths, a path for each. Uh, the, the ultrasonic we were calling H2O Pro, that's the whole building monitor, uh, but we're going to do a consumer play, um, so now we're calling it um, Fluid. And um, So in our team, we sort of, we built out our team quite a bit, uh, sales and leadership is, is me and my co-founders, uh, we brought on um, you know, back-end electrical designer, uh, engineer. Uh, industrial designer, um, got a partner for the prototyping and manufacturing, um, UI UX, uh, guys, ultrasonic guru, um, then we hiring a company, we're about halfway through with our, our video, um, and uh, purpose of the video, we're doing a Kickstarter. And what we want to do is test the consumer market around smart home, um, creating a product that is consumer focused with the Wi-Fi connection, um, that you know, we're creating a video 
we talked about manufacturing, now we're doing engineering, um, opening a launch later this month. Uh, we're building a community right now, and the last feature of what this is going to look like um, is we're creating something also called signatures, which is going to be algorithmic, and then when someone connects it to the pipe in their basement right after their main water unit, is that we want them to be able to look at their phone, and as they're using showers, flushing toilets, clothes washers, dishwashers, and all those things, all those things have water signatures. And so what we want to start identifying is how water is getting used in the home, and potentially even have um, the human um, start to stop some of these devices when they're first setting up the meter, and then they can start understanding how it's getting used in the home. Uh, and that just simply clamps around the pipe and uses, again, ultrasonic technology to read the, the water flow. Um, so with the toilet meter, it's a totally different path. Um, we're partnering with a nonprofit developer um, who has about 3,000 units in the Twin Cities, um, a design and development firm which is going to handle uh, the manufacturing. Uh, then we're also partnering up with the University of Minnesota um, or the Center for Energy and Environment um, to um, validate essentially a, a case study on these 3,000 units and with these toilet meters installed the reduction in water use as well as maintenance trying to find and fix leaks. Um, and then the, a foundation that would pay for all this because it's not cheap. Uh, so that's my quick run through kind of of the, the, the two water meters that we're working on and ready for, for questions. Yeah. That prototype for the toilet meter? Yeah. Is the end product actually going to run off of spark cord? No. Okay. No. Right. No. There, there's a product in the, the toilet meter that um, is based out of uh, Switzerland that um, harnesses the energy as the water goes through and powers up the unit. Um, and then that's using a specific chip that the design manufacturing firm has located that um, is able to send a signal through heavy concrete and steel and lath and plaster and be able to have all the devices be able to route and then connect. So you need a hub then? Yep, yep. But again, the toilet meter is focused on big, bigger multifamily buildings who could, could afford something like that. Yeah. Are you doing any of this with uh, hot water use? No, we aren't. Um, but I've been reading studies around um, kind of the idea of, of how water is used in the home mm -hmm. and how that relates to cold and hot water. Um, so if you have if you have ideas, would love to love yeah, to hear your of, thoughts. A lot of electric utilities are using electric water and heat for DR purposes. So okay. It seems like it could be some interesting things with this. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Europe does also use a lot of hot water, mm -hmm. so so monitoring. For putting a thermal couple just to kind of read the temperature might be good. Sure. But uh, did you consider putting a, a shutoff valve, especially that if you're on vacation and something yep. is leaking? Yep. Right. Yeah, no, that, that, that would be something that we would, you know, there, there, there's products out there that are already offering stuff like that. I know there's a company out of Boston that did a launch, <coughs> they have a product called the Water Hero, and they have a, they have a shutoff valve that, that connects to that. So, yeah, we could certainly. Add that in, and I think that'd be a valuable asset to have as well. Yeah. Talk a little bit about the reporting features again, and how long they're saving them historically. If you can kind of run reports, that type of thing. Or yeah. Yeah. So the reporting, the way that we have it right now, it's it's mostly just historical. Um, you know, things that that we've seen and, and, and heard, both in our own needs as well as the conversations that we've had with both consumers as well as multifamily property owners, is wanting to benchmark understand how much water you use versus similar buildings versus similar households. So I think benchmarking would be big, uh, breaking up how you use water, um, you know, setting goals where you can see how well you're doing against how much water you want to use, you know, in, in any uh, course of time. So yeah, definitely hoping to, to get a lot of feedback really from, uh, from, from, the, from the users and what, what, what do they want to see, what do they want to use. So, yeah. How accurate is the ultrasonic device? It's, it's, it's really accurate. So the, I think we can get down to like, like a, a half a gallon used over the course of like an hour. So, um, you know, ultrasonic's been around forever. Um, it's <coughs> mostly heavily used in industry. So, yeah. So what sets you apart from Water Hero? Well, Water Hero, you have to connect it around a meter. This you can connect to any pipe you want. Um, so you can connect it to, you know, from copper, steel, PVC, you can put it anywhere you want. So an installation that we did for a business, um, they actually do dialysis treatments. 
and they wanted to understand how much water is getting used, but there's no meter there, it's just water flow coming in. They wanted to be able to understand what's the difference between the water that gets used for everything that we do versus the water that's used simply for the dialysis treatment. So there's no meter there. So in cases like that, you know, this is really one of your only options. So, uh, but yeah, that would be big. And then I think also it's, um, it's the software side, right? I mean, once someone installs the hardware, that five or ten minutes, the rest of their experience is in the software. Mm -hmm. And so we feel really strongly about the, the software that we're developing. Uh, so when you <coughs> go talk to Google, and uh, how complete was your prototype and uh, how did you manage to convince them to give you money? Well, they didn't give us money. Oh. So, no, yeah, Google Ventures didn't give us money. So what they wanted was, they, they, they said we need more market validation. And so that's, that's what we're working on. And again, I mean, we, we had an opportunity to pitch to, to Google because we office out of Cocoa in downtown Minneapolis and they have a relationship with Google. So um, whether we do anything with Google, who knows? You know, I mean, Google, Best Buy, Dropcam. Um, Dropcam can buy fluid. So, but yeah, so it's, um, it's, it's, you know, a good relationship to have. We certainly are still in contact with those guys, so. Yeah. How much have you tried pitching this to actually individual cities or utilities? Uh, really not much at all. Um, that's certainly one of the areas that we would look at, at, at going. I think part of it is you know, speed, speed to market sure. and trying to get some validation quickly. And, and you know, we're not using Kickstarter to, <coughs> to fund the business, but really to kind of prove to a certain extent that there's market demand for something like this um, that I think would allow us to bring in more investment and, and really scale growth. Yeah. What about the hospitality industry? Yeah, actually, one of my co-founders, his his daughter works at at a, a high-end hotel, and they just had a big water leak about two weeks ago that cost hundreds of thousands of dollars um, to fix. And um, yeah, it's huge. I mean, there could potentially be, you know, if, if you can get enough, um, you know, installs. Uh, you know, there's the potential for even getting rebates, you know, the, the consumer or the businesses that buy these um, to get vetted by the insurance companies. That if you can start identifying leaks, that you can actually start getting discounts. And, you know, as far as the business model goes, selling these, um, you know, there's the cost of the unit and then there's also potentially subscription fees. Uh, for sure on the business side, I'm not sure how much appetite there is by consumers uh, for that, but definitely um, businesses, you know, the ones we've talked to are willing to pay in double digits a month just to get data <coughs> access to, to, to this. So. Hey, one more question. So how yeah. do you plan to sell these direct to the, to the consumer or to some channels? Um, both. So uh, for sure to, to consumers through the Kickstarter and see how that goes. Um, the design development firm is uh, that we've been uh, working with, they have tons of contacts. So for example, one of their contacts is one of the biggest plumbing distributors in the country, which serves the big box realtor, uh, retail stores like Home Depot and Lowe's. Um, and they started sharing some of uh, the concepts that we have um, and they're interested in, in learning more. So getting distributing where we may never even have to make the product, we may just license it. Um, that's definitely um, a good possibility as well. All right, let's, uh, we gotta keep moving on.